in the Echo Hawk home. I personally believe in like a cultural and spiritual call to doing this kind of art. Each stitch. I did these handprints in the color of the native medicine wheel. Each shade. Red is the color of prayer. Comes with a story. It's also a symbol of the missing and murdered indigenous women and girls movement. And sometimes a reminder about the plan. These kids along with my own, they know that if their aunties or their mom ever went missing, that we would never have left them on purpose. It's a plan Abigail Echohawk of the Seattle Indian Health Board says every Native woman she knows has had to make what her family should do if she were to disappear. They would need to um, make sure that somebody looked for us. For my children, they know that my handprints are on the dresses. They know that they would be able to take my fingerprints to the police. Do you ever remember not knowing about this? No. We can be in danger People get lost by not telling people where they are and not being careful. They don't come home and you don't get to be with your family anymore. Here in Washington, Indigenous people are going missing or being murdered at the second highest rate in the country. Seattle itself ranks as the city with the highest number of cases nationwide. According to the Seattle Indian Health Board, compared to white women, Indigenous women in Washington are four times more likely to go missing. Right now, state patrol records show 126 Indigenous people in the state who aren't accounted for. Research has shown us that the primary perpetrator of the acts of violence against indigenous women and girls are white men, predominantly white men who come onto reservations or target indigenous women within urban settings. With fewer resources, Native American families are forced to take matters into their own hands and form plans for their loved ones. I have actually posted something on Facebook. If I ever go missing, know that uh, I didn't do it on purpose. Come look for me. I love my family and friends. I wouldn't just disappear. Nana Bluen has spent the past two years looking for her own sister, 39-year-old Mary Johnson. Mary was last seen on the Tulalip Reservation on Thanksgiving 2020. We don't want her flame to go out, so we're trying everything we can to keep her name and face out there. Mary's sisters, Nona and Jerry, believe she may have been a victim of human trafficking. Yeah, what do you tell your kids about where she is? I just say, um, Aunt Mary's trying to find her way home. And uh, my little, our eldest daughter, she goes like this all the time. You know, and, and she's like, um, Mom, can we email the chief and ask where she is? Mom, why are they looking for her? You know, how come she's not home yet? She can't be that lost. And I don't want to tell them that she's missing. So that's what I tell them. Fire Trail Road. This is the road what Mary was seen walking on the day she went missing. We believe that she trusted somebody, got in a vehicle, and has never been seen since. Tulela Police Chief Chris Sutter sees Mary's case as a continuation of what's been happening to Indigenous people in America for centuries. Historically, the wrongs that have been committed, including abductions and murders and rapes and all, all forms of sexual assaults and, and other types of abuses, have gone unpunished and unprosecuted. This has been perpetuated for centuries. And it's because of that history, Chief Sutter has talked to his own children about the plan. My children have all heard dad preach to them, be aware of their surroundings and their situation and don't trust people. So I wanted to do this in honor of the families. Back in the Echo Hawk home. Do you guys know that? We would never leave you. Mm -hmm. Abigail hopes future generations won't need to prepare for their own abductions or murder by having a plan. Having a plan is part of the hopelessness that's experienced by our communities. It's not something any of us should have to do. Until then, Abigail creates hope from unlikely sources, like these flowers on her latest art piece. And really thinking about every single person as a blossom, as beloved life. When the Seattle Indian Health Board asked for PPE during the pandemic, the federal government sent them these body bags instead. How many body bags do you have? Got like 22 left. 22 
body bags? Now Abigail uses them to create art that highlights the issue of missing and murdered indigenous women. One of her works made from these body bags has even been featured in Vogue. My artwork is a form of healing. She's also now using them to keep the traditions of her culture alive for the next generation. It it's cool because most people are not able to be a part of the culture. The thing I love about it is that for these kids, this is just who they are. It's going to be pretty. Creating hope and beauty from darkness. There is hope on healing the past so that we have full healing for our community so their children's children don't experience the same things that I did, that they did, where something like this is never out of a body bag again. I refuse to let the hopelessness be all the conversation. If you have information on Mary Johnson's case or any other missing Indigenous person case, contact the Seattle FBI office. We have a full list of those missing, along with information on how you can pass along tips on our website, king5.com. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa. Just want to say prayers. We go into there. The scent of burning sage carries a prayer for the Bolt Hill family. As we start this day, we just ask Creator to help us to find Shalina. For four days, the search for 31 year old Shalina Mae Bolt Hill. If she's in here, we want her to see you. Has led her family and advocates to several homeless encampments. You guys here today? I see you all the time. Yeah. The Idaho native moved to Seattle with a boyfriend in 2017 and soon lost touch with her family. I think that she got into the drug scene. The last couple of uh, messages she had left her dad were just absolutely unbelievable. They didn't make any sense. About a year ago, he stopped getting any messages, any calls. Wednesday, the family got their first glimpse of Shalina after more than five years. She got pockmarked all over her face. She screamed and said, this lady's crazy, uh, help. But then, I don't know, a few seconds later, she turned around and told me she loved me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Watch out for needles. The unhoused that live here call this area near the I-5 and I-90 interchange the jungle. It's one of Seattle's long-standing encampments. Can you guys wait right here? Can you all recognize Bree? Roxanne White, founder of the grassroots organization Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, People and Families. That's what they're saying, King Street, and then over there by Yesler again. Has a unique understanding of what Shalina and her family are up against. I used to be homeless and I used to be, I, I'm a trafficking survivor and I was out on the streets and I know the kind of things that happen out here and I know firsthand just what I survived and I can't imagine um, and then I can which breaks my heart to know that she's walking around with no shoes and that she never wears shoes. Seattle police tell us Shalina is not considered missing. In an email, police confirm they've had prior contacts with Shalina over the years and even made a past referral for evaluation. This child, this woman, this young lady is incapable of even asking for help. So that leaves the family to bear this burden on their own. The heartbreaking thing is, is who do we call? I mean, there's nobody to call. Uh, there's nobody to come aid us. There's gaps in this system. Do you know where she might be right now? She's around. She's around? Is she in this camp right now? Uh, last time I seen her was on that road. As close as the searchers get, Shalina remains just out of reach, much like the resources they desperately need to get her home. Last year, an out-of-state tribal court granted Shalina's mother guardianship over her so she could be committed for treatment. However, an Indigenous rights lawyer tells us it's unlikely the tribal order is enforceable in Washington. I've done everything in a mother's power to save my child, and I've fought against the system now for a while, which means my, my words mean nothing to them, and that's not okay. It's not okay. A plea for help that Roxanne, a once missing Indigenous woman herself, hopes to answer. I think it's so important that we try to come in and do what we can so that she doesn't become one of our uh, MMIW that never makes it home. This is why I survived everything. This is why I survived. It was to help 
other families. This is roughly the sixth search Roxanne has organized as part of her work with the families of missing and murdered indigenous people. She says she desperately needs volunteers and donations to continue to raise awareness around this ongoing crisis. To find out how you can help, go to our website, king5.com. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa. For months, our Facing Race team has been looking into why Washington State and Seattle specifically have some of the highest numbers of missing Indigenous people in the country. It is a crisis that Washington State will now be the first to address with a new statewide alert system. PJ Randawa explains how it works and how it could help. Right now, there are 128 reports of missing Indigenous people in Washington, but advocates and investigators say there are likely more cases that haven't been reported. Part of the problem is there hasn't been much help or attention. The hope is this new alert system will change that. On your phone and on the road. Starting July 1st, Washingtonians will start seeing missing persons alerts specifically about Indigenous people. It's called the Missing Indigenous Person Alert, or MIPA. While Indigenous people make up less than 2% of Washington's population, studies show Indigenous women are four times more likely to go missing than white women and face murder rates more than 10 times the national average. We just want to be heard. We want to know that our lives matter and we want to be found. And that's what this alert system does at the end of the day. Representative Deborah Lakanoff, the only Indigenous woman in Washington's House of Representatives, says the alert will streamline tribal and local police jurisdiction issues, which have historically hampered missing persons investigations. No, I'm not so alone that I won't sit in my house and wonder why no one's helping me find my daughter and why there's no police. They will contact the local police, the state police, and now the broadcast will go out in my local area. Here's how it works. When a person is reported missing to tribal or local police, the investigator on the case now has the option to ask Washington State Patrol to issue an alert. How do you decide who gets an alert? Is it an imminent danger situation? And would activation of that alert assist in the recovery? As law enforcement, we kind of have to make that decision. Sometimes it's a tough decision. So this is an example of what the flyer is going to look like. Once activated, you could see the MIPA alert on highway sites, social media, and on WSP's Twitter page. When we put these flyers together, we'll be adding photos of the missing person and any associated vehicles. The MIPA alerts won't be as visible as Amber Alerts, but that could change by the end of the year. Future technology will allow us to geographically target the alerts. Representative Lukanoff says the MIPA alert model could soon be replicated in Canada and across the U.S. We're getting responses from the attorney generals across the state, across all the states. For those still searching for missing loved ones like the family of Mary Johnson, the alert is welcome news that they say could have made all the difference. Do you think something like that would have helped? If um, this was back when Mary first was reported missing, of course, um, I believe she probably would have been found. The alert system does something very simple for us as Native American women. It takes the hand away from the mouth so you can hear the unheard screams. King 5 will be broadcasting those MIPA alerts. It's part of our commitment to help end the epidemic of missing and murdered Indigenous people in our state. To sign up for the alert, text the word ALERT to 206-448-4545 and we'll send you a link. For Facing Race, I'm PJ Randawa.